Oh, hey, welcome, welcome to the stream. Y'all are fucking great. Yeah, I forgot my mic was on mute, so. Sound is, sound is all fine and dandy. So, here we are. Welcome to Dream Daddy. This is going to make, this is going to be the uh, finale of the Craig route. So, basically the only one I really give a shit about, because best character. Hell yeah. So without further ado, we're gonna we're gonna go play some video games. Let's continue. Hell yeah. Falcon Punch. I guess not. I mean like if you're talking about the standard song. I mean, whatever. So I just gotta get some water. Have some ASMR chips. ASMR, everybody. Chewing loudly. All right, there we go. Relax, Dad Tron. I'm a big kid now. I can take care of myself. Besides, I gotta share a room with Monica Sanders and two mom chaperones. The most trouble I could possibly get into is falling asleep with a tub of ice cream on me. Oh, well, all right. Don't steal anything, okay? Since you asked nicely, fine. Promise. You know, me too, Amanda. I am a massive thief. Fun fact, I pretty much stole half of my art supplies in art school because this shit's expensive. I step outside, hauling my bags behind me. Craig's already strapped some camping gear on top of my modest, but stylish car. He noticed me carrying my equipment and hurries over to take it from me. Alright, uh, we're gonna save here. Such a gentleman. Almost, case of the, almost had a case of the vapors there. Yes, eggplant! I win! Never fear. These muscles- Never fear. These muscles were made for picking up heavy things and putting them in other places. Remember, this is your weekend to relax. Take it easy. I guess I can't argue with that. Everything good with Amanda? Yup, on our way to a school trip to Washington, D.C. What about your offspring? Already at Smashley's for the weekend. I'm ready to get my camp on. I load the rest of my stuff into Craig's car and we get in. Ooh. Oh no! What's wrong? I think I left my juicer plugged in. We gotta go back! Are you worried that someone's gonna break into your house and cold press some carrots? No, it's just... I... Just try to relax, man. Let the juicer float away. Take all your worries and blend them in the pulpy good vibes. Craig takes a deep breath. Do we have anything to listen to? Uh, all I had in my place is a series of CDs that guide you through a through a thorough and intense calisthenics workout. Do you want to listen to those? Um, I'm just kidding. Craig hands me a thick case filled with CDs. Take your pick. I thumb through page after page of kids sing along CDs. Okay, yeah, twinkle twinkle little star. Takes me back. Keep going. I get to the end of the case to find, in the very last slot, a blank CD with Craig's handwriting on it. Holy shit. It's a mixtape! He's gonna pedal me his mixtape! This is awesome! Dr. Kegstan's Mega Mix of Volume 1. DJ Kegstan. Made it just for the trip. I think you'll like it. He's giving us his mixtape! Craig did not forget the lube. Then again, who needs lube? I pop the CD into the car stereo and it's like I'm immediately transported to our old dorm room. Hit after hit plays and soon enough we're both happily scream singing the lyrics to each song as we fly down the highway. Iconic. Best date. This song was Carl's favorite. Carl, the third roommate! You brought that dog home one night and I couldn't pry you two apart. So we spent an entire semester fabricating a story about our foreign exchange student roommate who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Then we had a room inspection. 
that Ari was so suspicious of us but could never prove anything. And Carl was just under a blanket. Bless that cup's cur pup's courage under fire. Man, we did some dumb things back in college. The hours fly by as we belt out tunes in whatever non-existent key our voices register in. Soon enough, we're surrounded by lush trees and spectacular vistas of everything amazing that nature has to offer. Feels good to be back out here. It's still the city in the picture! You couldn't just have a fucking... You couldn't just take the bottom layer and just draw another background? Like, are you kidding me? Feels good to be back out here. Real good. Oh, there we go. Here's the forest. They just reused it. They, they just fucking reused it from the last from the last date. Whatever, man. We park our cars at the entrance to a familiar trail and load up our gears on our backs. I'm thankful for what I've been working on my health over the past couple weeks. Otherwise, I'd be dreading all the hiking that's about to happen. Craig looks intently at his phone. Everything all right? Yup, just had to fire off one last work email. Oh. Craig pockets the phone and we start off on the trail. It's relatively easy, but I know I would have been huffing and puffing at this point if it weren't for all the murder sprints. A look around me and take in all the tall trees and animals. Animal shirts. Everything okay back there? There's no reception out there. Oh yeah, being out in the middle of nowhere will do that. I recognize the look of anxiety on Craig's face. But what if there's a problem? Alright, let's save your train for this. Look, Craig, we all know if you really wanted to, you could flex your calf muscles and fly out if you're like a rocket ship all the way back to Maple Bay. You're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. This is our weekend. We keep marching down the trail, but it seems like Craig is still worried. Um, let's try. I didn't get... Let's see. There won't be. That'll be fine. Come on, bud. Who's a relaxed boy? I don't know. Craig. I'm a relaxed boy. Alright, let's load the last file. We're gonna get the eggplants. We're gonna S-class this date. Reception. Right here in the middle of nowhere. Miles from civilization. Nothing with us but the clothes on our backs and a sack of granola. You ever read those stories about campers who get eaten by bears? Or who get lost and have to drink their own urine? Or worse, what if we have to eat each other? Craig, promise you'll eat me. I couldn't handle cannibalizing my best friend emotionally. Or physically, you're far too lean. I wouldn't be able to last through the winter. Okay, so that didn't work. Just some reassurance. That's my dude. The hardcore clicking sound, yeah, that that's how, that's just, you know, yep. I gotta, like, tap it now, because it, it registers way too much when I click. That guy should probably get an actual mouse instead of using my trackpad. Hold up. Uh, this is professional as fuck. Fuck. Oh my god, this is a uh, real dumb. How do you lose such. Oh, there we go. There we are! Sorry about the mic, it's a. Uh... There we are! There we are! My character is, in fact, a dude, but I'm just pretending I'm female for the fuck of it. Because I am a girl. Maybe we should go back. We could find another campground that gets good cell phone reception. Craig, seriously, what's wrong? I mean, I'm just really nervous. My dad instinct is kicking in and my mind keeps conjuring up all sorts of worst-case scenarios. What if something happens to the girls? I don't have a signal. I would have no way of knowing. Let me tell you, that feeling never goes away, no matter how old your kids are. You just gotta remind yourself that they're in good hands. Craig does the same thing. I give him a reassuring punch on the shoulder. Try to remember why we came out here. The plan was to get, get get away from it all, just focus on ourselves for this little trip. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing in the woods. Craig looks at me directly, directly in the eyes. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing in the woods. We're gonna have some fun this weekend. 
Craig and I get back to marching. It's not too long of a hike before we get to the campsite, and we're both glad to see that we're the only people there. I can't believe you still have this tent. Found it in my attic and already checked it for holes. Seen better days, sure, but I think we'll be able to survive. I dump the bag of fabric and poles on the ground. We unfold the tent in the desired spot. I hand Craig the stakes. We still know how to do this, right? Of course we do! We do not. After 20 minutes of struggling like people in a bad infomercial, we somehow managed to build an upright structure that closely resembles what a tent would look like if you asked someone to draw a picture of one with their eyes shut. It looks fine in the... in the fucking... Image, the background, okay. I wouldn't put this up against the storm, but I think we'll be able to survive for the night. We set up a couple sat on a couple chairs and our cooking equipment, admiring our handiwork. Bro, look at us go. Look upon the kingdom we have built. Upon this rock we shall grill our meats and drink our brews. For this we hold dominion over this land. Barely, and uh look at our camping chairs, which we are going to sit on. Professional streamer. Each while streaming. Hot. So what's next on the dad extravaganza docket? Well, now that we have shelter settled, I think it's time for us to do some exploring. Fuck, I, I, can't, I need to do the bro voice. It's like, there isn't really much bro here. There's a waterfall a little bit up that way, but I'm sure we could hike too. Let's get hiking. Craig and I venture into the woods. We amble along, taking our time to chat and admire the wildlife. I'm about to fuck the dam! Craig reaches out an arm and stops me. Dude, does that look like what I think it looks like? I look over where he's pointing. Oh my god, it does. That tree- <laughs> that tree looks like a butt. I can't get over how detailed it is. I examine the butt tree further. The contour is perfect. It even has back dimples. I thought we were gonna have a great time camping, but this makes it even better. Craig holds back a snicker. I aspire to have every hike be as good as this one. I'm snickering now, too. Let us analyze this tree further. <laughs> Craig and I share a huge belly laugh at our awful jokes. The best thing about this is that there's no daughters here to tell us our jokes are bad. We high five. <laughs> Hell yeah. Craig and I hit the trail again. It's been a long time since we've been out here, but everything seems more or less familiar. We put our we point out our old landmarks that I remember from our college days. I think we're getting close now. Check it out. There's a clearing up ahead. As we get closer, I can hear water running. Ooh, beach episode! We're getting the beach episode of my waifu. Ooh, hell yeah. Cresting over a hill, Craig and I are greeted by a wide clearing surrounded by trees. In front of us is a beautiful waterfall that looks like a fucking curtain. That looks like a fucking curtain. I think it's just because of the line work, but like... Really. Hi Ty, welcome to the stream and ghost. If y'all are having a fun time, this is gonna be great. We're greeted by a ground clear surrounded by trees. There's a waterfall spilling into a large body of water that runs into a river. And we're all like, damn, this is pretty. The old waterfall. It's gorgeous. Nature's so rad. Hearing further, we get an idea of how deep the pool is. Think we could jump off of it like the old days? Ha! This old dad is happy here on dry land. Looks like you could climb right up over there. We didn't even bring swimming trunks. What are you talking about? Craig immediately begins taking his clothes off. Oh! Hell yeah, that's the shit I like to see. Let's hope this fan service is good. Oh yeah! Woo! <laughs> just, just let it focus. You know, let it, let it coalesce. Let it focus. Craig isn't the only thing that's gonna get wet tonight. Look at- Ah! <laughs> important! Important. This is extremely important. I gotta save this. 
Fuck, do I look at his butt or do I not look at his butt? Oh, Jesus. Dicks out for Harambe! Oh, no! Oh, God. Alright. I'm gonna look. I can't help but sneak a peek. That... That is a good butt. Craig turns around suddenly. He catches me looking. I do a lot of glute workouts. You caught me staring at your ass! I mean, it's good I'm home alone or else I would have people running in here like, Allie, what the fuck are you doing? Like, oh my god! <laughs> Immediately- OH! The, there's emojis everywhere! Eggplants and teardrops and hearts and- Oh god. Look at the balls! You coming or what? Oh, uh, I don't know about this, dude. He's already making his way over to the waterfall by the time I finish my sentence. When he realizes it's not behind him, he turns around and rolls his eyes. We lived together for years and I've seen your ass more times than I can count. It's no big deal. Fuck! Oh god, should I flirt or should I joke? This is like, re this is the closest I'll ever get to a stable relationship, let me tell you. So, trying to flirt in a game is just as hard as it is for me in real life. This is, a uh, this is fucked up, dude, what do I do? Let's put on a show. And the clothes are coming off and it's someone's birthday. Craig gives me the wolf whistle. Um, alright. Nope. Who needs pants anyway? They're society's oppressors. Down with pants! Down with the system! That's the spirit! Take- Alright. I feel stupid because it's like, most people will probably be like, Eh, yeah, you gotta just go with what you want. I'm like, fuck you, dude. Oh. Yeah, whatever. I, the first one. Like, I gotta go with my gut instinct with these. I turn around and give my booty a good s OH MY GOD! I would never do that! FUCK! That one's for you, big boy. OH MY GOD! OH MY GOD! I would never fucking do that! That's not in character, that's completely out of character. Uh, uh. <laughs> I think my face is a little red right now, just a little bit. Um, I think uh, some of the blood's rushing up here. I'm a wimp. I take my shirt off and drop it in a pile with Craig's clothes. I put the rest of my clothes on the ground, feeling exposed. Craig and I climb up to the top of the waterfall, making sure not to slip on any wet rocks. He reaches for the peak before I do and offers me a hand getting up. At the top, we look over the cliff and into the tiny lake. Seems so much higher up from this perspective. Craig has always been a daredevil. He pulled some stunts in the college, and I'm honestly still shocked he survived. I was always the one standing on the sidelines, watching and hoping I wouldn't be bringing him home in a gurney. Man, this could be dangerous. Craig looks me in the eyes. Don't think. Just. Jump. Craig cannonballs off the waterfall and into the lake, creating a huge splash. I'm worried for a moment before he finally resurfaces from under the water. Woo! God. He treads water and looks up at me. You coming or what? Don't think. Just jump. How are you supposed to just not think? I'm pretty sure that's not physically possible. My toes grip the edge of the rock. The water looks so far away. Don't think. Just... I run off the edge, trying to do my best cannonball. Somewhere in the middle, it turns into a really graceful belly flop. I hit the water with a loud slap. I resurface to find Craig giggling. Like a fucking schoolgirl. I rate that belly flop a solid 8 out of 10. Your form was lacking, but your heart was in the right place. I playfully splash water at Craig. Are you sure about that? 
Fuck. I splashed him again. You've given me no choice. Craig splashes me in the face with a huge wave of water. You've awakened the beast. Oh boy, Splash War! And one of my friends is playing another game. She's probably looking at my game and being all like, What is this? Why are you playing Dream Daddy? I, I spent $15 to fuck a fictional man. I spent $15 on this. He launches another wave of water at me. Don't you put me in a corner here. Don't put a wild animal in a corner. Alright. Let's dunk him! I launch for Craig and manage to get him in an arm lock. Time for the finishing move. I summon all my dad strength to lift Craig out of the water. Hey! And drop him down for the splash! Craig bounces out of the water. My turn. Oh no, it seems like Craig was simply allowing me to pick him up and dunk him. He grapples me with his clearly superior muscles and quite literally tosses me across the water. I emerge from the water, devastated. You think I did all those pull-ups just so I could look good with my shirt off? Nah, bro. These are arm cannon. These arm cannons are dad launchers. If I didn't have my shirt on, you'd see my like look. Li Craig does a playful flex for me. See, I my instincts. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I'll probably- I could play Brian, too. Damn. Craig. Truce. Please. Craig thinks about it. Yeah, sure. We shake hands. There is peace. Man, that jump was such an adrenaline rush. Not so scary now, huh? I'll race you to the top! We run all the way to the slick rocks and cannibal off the waterfall again. What a rush! Good form on that one. Wanna go again? You know it! With the same energy we had in our youth, we climb up to the top of the waterfall. I'm brave enough to try a flip, which I'm sure looks incredibly blaze graceful as I belly flop into the water. Phew, man! This is fun! Got one more in you? I live for the danger! It takes us a little more time when we get to the waterfall and both do our best running jumps into the water below. Alright, I think that's my limit. We should get back going before it gets too dark. Alright. Are you kidding? I never felt more alive. Alright, bro. You sure? It's my time to jump. I screw up to the rocks one more time and do another classic cannonball. Wow, this is so fun! I'm getting kind of cold. Want to go back to the camp now? I'm done, I'm done. We should probably head back. We go put our clothes on, notice that they're soaking wet. Maybe a splash fight wasn't the best idea. Ah, it's okay. We'll get a fire going in no time. We can dry off and get some dinner going. I get to see him shirtless the whole time! wet, we hide back to the camp and unpack everything we need for dinner. Craig pulls out a couple of steaks and some chopped potatoes and tin foil. You ready for a feast? Hey man, take a seat. The Craig train is pulling into relaxation station and I'm your conductor. Let me cook for you. Absolutely not. Cooking is the thing that relaxes me the most. I'll take it from here. Craig cooks now? I remember how his entire sophomore year, year diet consisted of microwavable mac and cheese. But not microwave, and had trouble believing the thing he just said. Microwavable mac and cheese, but not microwaved. So, like, you take the dry noodles, and, like, put some water, and you put the cheese in, and you just eat it like that? Are you fucking kidding me? Is that how this shit goes? Yeah, y'all know who my favorite is. It's, uh... It's Joseph. Demon Man. At least let me start the fire. Sure, let me just grab my matches. Craig reaches into his backpack. He rummages around his bag, pulling things out and checking every pocket. Uh-oh. I know I packed it! Craig checks another bag and still can't find it. My stomach grumbles and now I'm more acutely aware of how cold and wet I am. We really need to get a fire soda. Okay, well it's not the end of the world. Gosh, I'm so stupid. I could have sworn I packed it. I'm sorry, dude. Don't be. We can figure this out. 
we can start a fire. We're smart, guys. I mean, how hard could it be? I watched plenty of survival programs on TV. If a naked reality TV star can do it, so can we. We'll need some wood. I gesture to the trees around us. There's no so shortage of that. And some tinder. We can make that work. And then I think some ancient aliens are then supposed to come by and give us advanced technology. Or renovate the house. Depends on the show. Craig and I gather a variety of wood, bark, and moss until we have all the materials that could, conceptually, make a passable looking campfire. Just add fire, right? That's the fun part! The sun is just now setting in a cool breeze, rustles the leaves of the trees around us. We have to work quick. I've done this in the past and I know I can figure it out, just give me a second. Any way I can help? Give me some moral support. Lift my spirits and we'll make this fire happen. Never knew- In all my days, I can confidently say I've never known a better Craig to be a better friend, father, or fire maker. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if I can, uh... Overboard! You're really giving that fire the business! You're an amazing, hard-working father with a steady work ethic and everyone loves you! Your daughters think you're a superhero and the neighborhood dads respect you immensely! And also, your butt looks great! Did I just hear someone come home? After I just said that line? Bro, stop! You'll make me cry! Okay, okay, don't want your tears putting out the fire! Eventually, Craig is miraculously able to get something going. He blows out the embers and gently places the glowing moss into the base of the pit. Soon enough, we'll have a nice fire going. We better have tent sex! I'm waiting! I'm waiting for that shit, boy. Okay, I'm joking. You know, I'm playing the Craig round. Craig's my favorite. You, you saw my thirst. Way to go, man! We're regular old outdoorsy fellas! Hooray for not dying! <laughs> I'd take a second in one of the lawn chairs Craig brought and cozy up to the fire, warming up my hands. Relax, man. Take it easy. Let me handle the dinner. I watch as Craig stokes the fire and sets up a makeshift grill for the steaks. After all that hiking and swimming and fire starting, I'm able to relax a bit. With the sound of crickets and the sense of steak filling the air, I actually feel pretty calm. It's not gonna be calm once those trucks fly off! I swear to god, I'm hearing a voice. Fuck. Oh god. Okay, I'm getting in trouble, aren't I? This is, uh, this is bad. Craig expertly sears two steaks in a pan he's been heating up on the fire, cracking thyme and crushed ginger over it while basting them both in butter. Okay, so he isn't bland as fuck. Oh my god. Wow, I didn't know he was actually good at cooking. The fanciest ever I saw him get in college was when he started sprinkling the seasoning packet onto dry ramen and eating it straight up. When did this happen? You used to eat cereal every morning with beer instead of milk. <laughs> this is why he's perfect! Because he did stupid shit like that! I grew up, I guess. I think these are just about ready. Craig pulls the steaks on a paper plate and sets them aside. I start to reach for one, but Craig smacks my hand away. Boy! Boy, my hand hurts! Don't do that! Dude, let him rest. It'll be more flavorful that way. I patiently return to my seat, eyeing the steaks longingly from a distance. They smell incredible. Craig prepares a side salad for us in the meantime, sprinkling feta cheese on freshly chopped greens. He plates it next to a generous pile of roasted potatoes covered in oil and rosemary. So you're saying this boy is, can go on, like, fucking... I don't know, like, chopped or some shit? And win. Literally, they made the perfect man for me. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? This game. Got a man that can cook. A man that's got abs. A man that's got a nice ass. He's, uh... He's got kids. He's cute. He's fit. Got the nips. Probably got a decent junk in the trunk over there. That's uh, this is everything I could ever want in a man. I'm dead fucking serious, boy. Dead fucking serious. What the hell is this game? Vernon, Layton, whoever made this game. Um, how did you hammer down on every single thing that I like in a man without even knowing who I am? Are you? Whatever. Let's keep going. 
Once it's all ready, we sit down by the fire and dig in. Everything tastes okay? I'm in heaven. Oh. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Remember how for an entire semester we eat burritos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? It's so hard to not go back to that. Look around you now, man. You have kids, a great job, and now you cook like a vengeful wizard whose arch nemesis is microwavable food. I'm really impressed with how much you've gotten your life together. Craig laughs, but there's no humor in it. I'm glad you think that. I glance at Craig while he picks at his salad. He really grew out of his baby face, but there's something about his expression that makes him seem so much older than he is. A sense of maturity he didn't have in college. He looks... exhausted. You okay? Yeah. No, you ain't. Come on, dude. I've known you for long enough to see when you're down. I'm tired, bro. I think being out here is making me realize just how drained I feel. You work really hard, Craig. It can't be easy. I have to. For my girls. I volunteer at their school. I cook healthy meals for them. I do everything they can to make sure they're safe and happy. And even when they're with their mom, I'm always working overtime so I can support them. And then you work out a lot so you can crush anyone who stands in their way. That, and I don't want to fall into my old habits. I need to set a good example for my girls. Everything I do is for them, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But it seems like it's bleeding you dry. If that's what it takes to raise them well, then it's worth it. Craig, buddy, I know where you're coming from here, but you gotta take care of yourself, too. I do, though. I eat right and exercise and... That's not what I mean. You're, you, you're too little butter on too much toast, you know? What? You're spreading yourself too thin. Life needs balance. It's great that you care this much about your kids, but... You can't neglect your own needs because you're too busy taking care of everyone else's. You matter, too. It's just... I know I can provide for my family. If I take a step back and look at everything objectively, I know I'm doing right by them. But... I can't explain a man. There's always that voice in the back of my head telling me that I need to do more. It's like never enough for me. Every time I try to relax, that voice keeps telling me I don't deserve it. To be honest, I feel even guilty about being out here. See? Come on, guys. Y'all are just being rude. He's expressing his feelings to me. Craig, you're trying your best and you're doing an amazing job. That's a fact, but even if you weren't, you still deserve happiness. Do I, though? HELL FUCKING YEAH, BITCH! HELL FUCKING YEAH! <laughs> HELL YEAH, BRO! I look at Craig and think about what a good friend and even father, even better father he is. He's compassionate, he's hardworking, he's relentlessly positive. He encourages everyone to be the best version of themselves. He makes me want to be a better person. And to be a better man! If you could only see yourself the way I see you. Boy! Craig beams. He gets up and walks over to his supplies. Come on, I brought dessert! Oh, are you going to use the campfire to torch the tops of some creme brulee? What? I know little to nothing about cooking. Craig pulls out marshmallows. Well, you still know how to make s'mores, right? S'mores with my boy! This is a real date. I think the more important question is, do you know how to make s'mores? As I recall, you used to just completely blacken the marshmallows. Bitch, that is the best way to make s'mores? Like, blacken marshmallows, you just eat them straight off the stick? That's how you do it. Are you kidding me? Oh, I stand by that. Oh, I stand by that. It's charred on the outside, but gooey center is preserved. Brutish. More like fucking delicious. Craig throws a mat marshmallow at me and I catch it in my mouth. Pro move! We're used to be able to do that at a great distance against a wind disadvantage. Give me a week of practice and I'll be competitive again. Craig and I sit in the warm glow of the campfire, watching embers fall up towards the sky. Fuck by the fire, sex by the fire at night, gold jeans and diamonds all the way. Lucky for you, that's what I like. I'm gonna get copyrighted for that. Fuck it. Yeah, whatever. The stars are so much brighter out here. Yeah. I miss this, Allie. He referred to me by name! <laughs> we stay here until it gets late. 
half remembering stories from college. We watch as the fire dies and eventually clamber into the tent. Sex in the tent! Hell yeah! We crawl into the tent and I unfurl my sleeping bag. Wait, where's the other sleeping bag? I look around for a second. Oh. Oh no, I must have left it at home. Shit. Also, external link. Thank you for subscribing. This is awesome. It's Friday. It's a good Friday night. I'm glad y'all are here and having fun. Glad you're subbing. Z tent sex. It's all yours, dude. I'm sorry. I'll just curl up over here. No, way. Here. Craig comes into the sleeping bag and spreads it out so there's enough room for both of us to lay on top of it. Ooh! Night, bro. Good night, bro. I roll over and we face away from each other. Without a blanket, it's really cold. I shiver and without realizing it, I find myself nestling closer to Craig. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. I really wish I had my water now. He turns over and I can feel his breath on my neck. It's hard to focus on anything else. Ooh. I turn over trying to get more comfortable. I open my eyes to find Craig's face only a few inches from my own. For once, he looks at peace. His eyes flutter open. His hand finds a place on my waist. Oh! Ooh, yeah! I'm not sure who leans in first, but suddenly we're kissing. The title, Thirsty Teenager Plays Dream Daddy, that applies so hard. Oh boy. Oh god, I'm, I'm like a heating pad, what the fuck? Jesus. We look at each other again, my heart racing. Craig. Craig, what the fuck? I got strong feelings for you, bro. Feelings I can't deny anymore. He caught feelings! <laughs> Bro. Me too. HELL YEAH! We s we got our confessions out of the way! Go! I run my hands through his hair, then down to his chest. Craig brings it closer, wrapping his arms around me. I feel so... secure. Mm -hmm. You know, talking about old times is fun, but... I like making new memories with you. I smile, tracing the lines of his hip with my finger. Oh boy, we're going! We kiss again. I'm not worried about us getting too cold tonight. They skipped it! They skipped it! They complete! Where is my sex? Better if S class that shit. Yes! Hell yeah, I win! Whoa! Champion, bitch! Whew, I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Gotta act like I didn't fuck my man in the tent! Be cool, Allie! Be cool! Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad! Off to a good start. Something fishy. Rats. Sorry, sweetie, that life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but even I'm no match for the power and funding of the U.S. government. Well, if you think they're gonna take me alive, they got another thing coming. I'm kidding, you're right, I have a little surprise for you. Yeah, I can tell, you're pretty- you're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Aw, yeah! Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lean Amanda over the kitchen table where a present lies covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and you told me not to make a big deal out of it. But... Aw, Dad, you... I dramatically lift the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figured you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it'd be nice to take a piece of home with you. 
A DVD box set of long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. This is all 19 seasons. And bonus material including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pig skin or something? Totally! I follow Amanda into the back door. Oh! <laughs> What's everyone doing here? You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. My harem. My fucking harem. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here! Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is. Fully customizable down to the type of mac. And there's an ice cream cake. The good kind with the crunchies in the middle. I... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, alright? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. I'm getting in the mood. Fuck, I got it. Brian, you made it. Ha! I don't pass up a good mac. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Just not bad? Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thank you so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Looks like- wait. Looks like you settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. Bitch. Boy. Yep, I couldn't ask for a better golden sack. I could, you know. With Joseph out of the picture, it'd be the perfect cul-de-sac. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. We got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. Maybe if we weren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime. Sure, Joseph. That'd be great. Well, see you later. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Allie. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too! That scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. She's like, Whoa! Whoa! Am Amanda running at ridiculous high speeds. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey! Congratulations on graduating. I know you're gonna do great things at art school. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah! Thanks! Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. Hey. You're right. Go forth, adult. You go forth, adult. I can no longer give you a detention. Yeah, I'm gonna break anything I want and there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad about the time you gave me detention for breaking my globe? Nope. Oh. And I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place. She, she'll fit in the, she'll fit in the college just fine. Hey, hey. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yep. See you later. Hey, man. Matt! Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh bash of the talking banana breads ready for her. Thank you, I know she'll love that. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for an extending an invitation to my son and I. 
The I this icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. Hey, looks like Amanda's hanging out with Briar and Hazel. Let's see what they're up to. Okay, Briar, think of a shape. Hazel, what's she thinking? Square. Briar? Star. We'll get it next time. She's training the twins to be like creepy shining twins. Amanda leans in closer to Briar and Hazel, lowering their voice. Listen, you guys can be real with me. If you're downplaying your psychic abilities, I want you to know that you can trust me. Heck, even think of me as the third twin. Amanda, that's a triplet. You know, Dad, by the time I'm done with these kids, we're gonna be finishing each other's. What? You didn't even finish your sentence. What are we gonna be finishing? Each other's sentences! See? Third twin. I have to go. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops! What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but... Growing up wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's... There's been times in my life where you were my only friend. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that... Everything you've done for me is to prepare me for this. I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry. Don't cry. I swear to God, Allie, if you cry again... You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. Her eyes! <gasps> Present time! A man hands me a tiny wrapped package. I tear the wrapping off to find... A framed picture of me and Amanda. It's... Us. Kind of shocking all of her photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figured we'd need at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. I always do. Amanda and I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Oh, I'm gonna break so much stuff. Intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably gonna have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Amanda hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. I glance over to the back of the yard, where Craig is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. We're gonna fuck in the tree! Yeah! I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emmas are gonna go get ice cream. Love you, Pops! Amanda runs off to join her friends. I take a seat next to Craig as the last guests make their way out of the party. I'm reading this chat. Uh, this is great. Y'all are great. So much Six. I only did Damien's room for Lucien. No one's here right now! There's literally a cherry blossom tree with the petals and shit! With a cute boy! We already confessed, so it's not that anime. I take a seat next to Craig as the last guests make their way out of the party. Bro. Bro! This reminds me of the parties we used to throw. Here are keg stands, of course. Probably for the best. I don't want to get my hip replaced after a party trick goes wrong. We can leave keg stands in the past. I'm, uh, taking this weekend to relax. This party is my first stop out of the express train from the relaxation station. Next stop is Natville. Pull into Alley Concourse. I'd like to book a ticket to, Nat ticket to Natville as well. Might have to meet you halfway at eating food directly off your own stomach town. We both giggle, but man, do I just want to pour some chips on my belly while hanging out in the hammock. Craig, I'm glad you're making time for yourself. Me too. Stress is a funny thing, dude. I didn't realize how overworked I didn't realize how overworked I was until we got away from the city. It's honestly just as destructive as binge drinking every night and eating burritos off the floor. I guess we need to get out of the city more often then. Craig kicks his legs over the side of the bench and leans onto me, lying down my lap. I run my fingers through his hair. Aww. You know what? I almost want to like 
act out this scene, like, get my cat and just put him on my lap and just kind of like, hey boy. You're looking for balance. I admire that. I'm trying not to feel guilty about doing things. I'm trying not to feel guilty about doing things for myself. It's a process. And it's gonna take me some time to figure it out. I might need your help, bro. Craig, I'll be your bro till the day I die. And being your being your bro means forcing you to take care of yourself that I'll happily oblige. Craig looks up at me, smiling. Bro, that means so much to me. Craig sits up and pulls me into a kiss. Ah, what a sweetie! Bro, they both laugh. You and me, we're gonna be all right. We're getting married. We're getting married. Just speed through the credits like. Brr! Thank you, Leighton Gray and Vernon Shaw, for giving me the perfect waifu. I didn't get any mini games. I'm sad. Ballad of a fu all these are dads. Test company, please ignore. Play testers, special thanks, and all of our dads. A game from Game Grumps. Oh yeah, fan service. Woo! <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's uh, let's go to the gallery. Mmm, precious good shit. Husbando for life. <laughs> Look at him! He's beautiful! Alright, you know what? We're gonna close this. And we're gonna do something special. And I think, I don't know if I can or not, but... We're gonna continue. We're gonna pop into our, uh... Dad book file. I swear to god, there was a dad book file. Did that just get deleted? Are you fucking kidding me? Alright, let's, uh, let's do something special and something stupid. We're gonna do- we're gonna go fuck Robert. Message! We're gonna fuck on the first night! Robert was pretty nice. A little odd, but nice. And ruggedly handsome. We should hang out. I tape out a message to him on dad book. Hey Robert, good seeing you again at the cookout. Wanna grab a drink? I sit there for a couple seconds, hoping he'll message me back. Hey, it says that he read my message. I actually wait for a response. Watch cat videos on the internet. I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. I didn't realize how long I've been doing this, but the time, the time I watched my 30th cat video, Robert packs into my head. I jump back over to Dad's book to see if he's responded yet. Nothing. Well, I guess the guy's busy. Might as well make the best of my day. I get up, walk to the living room, then sit down and turn on the TV. Watching a game show. Ooh, Family Fortune's on. Alright, Nicole, your parents are in the lead and it's up to you to win it big. Are you ready? I'm ready! They hook the contestant up to a lie detector in front of her parents. Who's your favorite parent? Uh, my mom? Ooh, sorry, incorrect. Next question. If both your parents were hanging off the edge of a cliff, which would you say? Uh, this is terrible. I love it. I lose several hours or whatever the hell that was. Sighing, I get up and walk around the house. My stomach grumbles. Time for lunch, huh? Well, I guess it's time for old Chef Streamer to cook a gourmet delicacy. I walk over to the refrigerator and open the door. Mustard jar! It's just too much work to make food. I reach in the back of the fridge and find an old mustard jar. Ooh, brown and spicy. 
this will be a treat. I put in my first spoonfuls of mustard and immediately realized this was a mistake. I lean over the sink and drink some water straight out of the faucet. Blah! Mustard alone is not a meal. If only had some Parmesan. I finished my snack around the house some more. Bored. When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found an old basketball hoop that would hang off a door. It would really bring the living room together. I wonder where I put that. I spend a couple minutes poking around the new place. So I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam! I take a leap from the three throw line and rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild! And welcome- And welcome to the jam! Come on and slam! If you want a jam! They know me! They know I love memes! I pull up from the tree at three point line, breaking ankles and sinking a fadeaway. And I forgot the rest of the words to this song. No look behind the back hook, hook shot. Everyone's on their feet. Something, something, space jam! I managed to just barely defeat myself at horse before Amanda comes home. Then we cook dinner together. We're proud of ourselves for not even coming close to burning down the house. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped. Toddler tournament. What you have in front of you is a molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with a brownie sugar dummy glaze with cream fraiche, of course. This is literally a jar of baby food. A toddler immediately bursts into tears. Are we bad people for watching this? Yes. Just then, my computer dings. Huh? What's that? Oh, you probably just got a message. A man and I walk over to the computer and check dad book. It's a message from Robert! You up? What you doing? What does that mean? What you doing? What am I- what am I doing? You're just chillin'. Just chillin'. Amanda deletes the G and hits the send. Just chillin'. It'll make you look cooler. Couple of months pass by. Another message pops up. Wanna grab a drink? Hey, that means you want to hang out! I know what that means, Amanda, but it's kinda late. Come on, Pops, live a little! I am living with ice cream and traumatized toddlers. Well, it's your life, but I think you'll have a lot of fun tonight. You're trying to get to know the neighbors better, aren't you? Ugh, fine! I type back a message to Robert asking him for details and then tells me to meet him at Jim and Kim's. Well, don't wave up for me. I never do. I throw on a nice jacket and run out the door. It's only a short walk to Jim and Kim's and it's a beautiful night. I walk into the bar and see the usual crowd of barflies drinking beer and watching sports. I spot Robert at the back of the bar and wave high as I walk over. Hey man, how's it going? Hey buddy. Ahoy there, Skipper. Robert and Mary are here? Uh-oh. I brought Mary along. Figured we need a drinking buddy. Aw, oh, man, I was excited to get to know Robert a little better. Now I have to deal with this weird mir married lady making passes at me. She's not gonna make passes. Like, you look at her. She's just drunk as fuck. Don't look so scared, kiddo. We're just having a drink. Yeah, speaking of which, I think it's time for the first round. What are you having? Whiskey! A dad after my own heart, huh? Robert orders three shots of whiskey and passes them between us. Well, this is how I expected my night to be going. Here's the bad decision and relaxed moral values, fellas. Oh no, I'm getting drunk. We all knock back the shocks. I almost choke on the whiskey if it burns down my throat. Holy hell, that was a kick. I look at Robert and Mary, who seem like old pros at this. Robert grabs his jacket and throws it on. Let's get marching. What? The night's young, chief. Come on, we're bar hopping. Oh, alright. We leave the bar and start walking down the street. I still don't know this area of town very well, so I just follow Robert. So where are we headed? Irish I were dunking. It's an Irish pub. A good pun is the whiskey is the whiskey to my heart. Puns are the lowest form of humor, Allie. Try harder. Okay. Ouch, am I gonna be the butt of the joke all night? Jesus, Mary, put your fangs away for a second. We walk into the Irish I were drinking. The bar is pretty much the same as Jim and Kim's, except for the old-timey Irish memorabilia on the wall. Next round, what are you having? More whiskey! Robert orders three more glasses of whiskey, and we post up in a garish green booth. Mari slides in and slides up next to Robert, which makes me breathe a sigh of relief. Let's sip this one, why don't we? Suit yourself. Mary immediately downs a shot in one gulps and burps loudly. That'll put a hair on your chest. 
You are truly the paragon of grace and beauty. Mary grabs my drink and sips on it. Hey! Allie, be a dear and get us another round, will ya? I don't know how to process this evening at all. I get up and order another round of drinks from the bartender. So I head back to see Mary and Robert having a lively conversation. Robert roars with laughter. I don't think I've ever seen this guy smile, let alone laugh. I take a seat across the booth from them and pass out the drinks. So Edith, so Edith's kid snuck out some pot brownies on the table at the last bake sale, right? The spot, that little hemp, hemp, little hemp sweatshirted gremlin in the act, right? So I go up to Edith with the baggie and I'm about to tell her when all of a sudden she just freaks out at me. You're ruining the bake sale, she says. I should have been, I should have been PTA president. Your roots are bad. And blah, blah, blah. So what'd you do? I told her to have a brownie and everything was going to be fine. They both erupt in laughter. I politely follow along with the story. She ate three. More laughter. Okay, that was actually pretty funny. She called the cops and told them that time had stopped. Mary looks directly at me. Do you smoke weed? What? You know, the devil's lettuce. I... I have two big fat blunts in my purse right now. Oh my god! We're getting high! We're getting high! Uh... You with the feds? I've worked hard for when I have a no-bit, two-bit corner boy's gonna drop the dime on me. So you take where you're pushing somewhere else and I'll keep running my business the way I want it to run. What? Remember, you come at the king, you best not miss. Jesus, Jesus, kid, dial it back. Robert giggles helplessly. I'm just kidding, cowboy. Lay off the kid, Mary. You might not be used to your brand of humor. Fine, fine. We sit around and sip our drinks, people washing and cracking jokes. After a little bit of time, I begin to warm up to Mary. Her jokes become much more funny and much less scary. But... Seems like she's not going anywhere anytime soon. Just wanted some alone time with Robert. I wonder if I can get her get her to leave somehow. Let's uh save. You know, I was hoping for a quiet evening with my friends. No drama, no unwarranted advances, just friendship. But no, you gotta call me out like that. Mary, I No, no, it's fine. You trying to ditch me, pal? Oops. You trying to ditch me, pal? I- No. Because if you're trying to ditch me, you can just tell me to scram. I- I just- No, no, it's fine. Allie wants some alone time with his new best buddy, Robert. Re read you loud and clear. The wingman breaks formation to pursue their prey. Now if you fellas will excuse me, Mary needs to sink her teeth into a helpless boy. Go with God. Nice seeing you. Deuces, nerds. Robert, Mary gets up and saunters over to a younger looking guy at the bar. She grows on you. Does she, though? I feel like she kind of delights in making men suffer. Well, she does. But what about her and Joseph? What about them? You know, they're married, and she definitely tried to get in my pants the other night, and... I gestured her across the bar, where she's making goo-goo eyes at the young guy from before. He looks like he's being held hostage. Oh, that's just a thing she does. She's harmless. Tell that to the boy she's hanging off of. Poor kid looks like he's seen war. Robert lets out a hearty laugh. Hey, I got him to laugh. Oh man, you know I pegged you for one of those straight lace types. Oh, don't worry, I got pretty wild back in my day. Still got a little wild in you? You know it! Robert orders a couple more shots of shots. I gulp. What am I getting myself into? Think you could go shot for shot? There's only one way to look cool here. I grab the shot closest to me and down it. Robert looks impressed. He takes a shot and knocks it back. That's one. So... What do we even talk about? He's so cool. And he probably hates small talk. Uh, so how are... thing... I hate small talk. Okay. Too many people. And this isn't necessarily you. But too many people think they have to fill the dead air with noise. Personally, I think they're afraid of the silence. Or if they're afraid of what the other person's gonna think of the silence. If you want some unsolicited advice, just learn to be comfortable with silence. Nothing wrong with two people sitting in silence and drinking whiskey. Oh. Alright. Robert and I sit in silence and drink whiskey. 
I'd take in the rest of the bar. Patrons laughing, playing darts, spilling beer. Mary giving the hard sell to that young man. The young man pretending he got a phone call from one of his friends. Huh. Maybe silence is nice sometimes. So, you ever kill a man? I'd choke on my drink. Excuse me? You know, watch the life drain for someone's eyes. It's not just their life, you know. It's their hopes and dreams draining away. Every memory and experience they ever had, gone. Uh, no. Great, me neither. Robert knocks back his shots and motions for me to do the same. I reciprocate. I'm just messing with you. Relax. I laugh nervously. Or am I? I laugh nervously again. We sip more whiskey and people watch some more. Mary has her sights set on another man after the one excused himself to the bathroom and, I assume, crawled out the window. That's probably my brother. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. You betcha. Robert gets out of the booth, shouldering his jacket. Let's roll! Sorry, whiskey. Inside voices. Let's roll. What about Mary? Brother, Mary's just gonna be just fine. Look over at Mary, who's lying on the bar in front of us, some poor sap. She's singing happy birthday to him while he insists that it's not his birthday. We make our way out of the bar and back on the street. I try my hardest not to stumble, but man, that sly look is just coming right at me. Hope Robert doesn't notice me tripping over my own feet like this. this is the first time I've ever been drunk. Where to? You'll see. I, sh I follow Robert through street lamp spotlights until we eventually arrive at a run-down strip mall. There's a beauty salon, a sex shop, a computer repair store that looks like it's been closed for 10 years, and finally, a liquor store. Wait here, I'll be right back. After a minute, Robert returns with two wine bottles and brown paper bags. He hands one to me. Cheers. He sits on the curb and drinks. He motions for me to do the same. This is really not where I expected the night to go. I take a sip. White Zifondale? What? Nothing. I just wasn't expecting. It's delicious. Fruity and refreshing. Don't judge me. I start to say something. Think of his lecture about value science earlier and stop. I sip on my wine and watch cars drive by. Let's throw rocks at shit. What? Robert suddenly hurls a rock at a stop sign. The ding echoes through the empty parking lot. That felt good. He presses the stone into my free hand. Now you try. Uh, I don't know. With feeling. I look at the rock in my hand and look at the stop sign. Back of the rock. Back of the stop sign. I know what has to be done. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna get the character here. Gonna chuck something across the room. I got a problem with authority! I hurl the rock at the sign. It seals over the stop sign, right into the window of a parked car, leaving a crit. Holy shit, okay. Wait here, I'll be right back. I have unresolved resentment towards my father and I'm gonna express it through property damage! Hold on, hold on. I think I actually damaged my dresser. <laughs> like I threw it at my dresser and it actually got some of the paint I actually got some paint chip on it. This is embarrassing. <laughs> Fuck. Dream Daddy's Dream 3 gone wrong gone sexual. Dude, run! I leap up and dart into the nearest alley, wine in hand. I can hear Robert's footsteps behind me. After I'm sure I'm far enough away from the cracked window that I'm no longer culpable for this heinous crime, I stop to catch my breath. Maybe we strike rock throwing to the to-do list? Agreed. Suddenly, my stomach growls. Oh man, I'm starving. Let's get pizza. I can't argue with that. 
for it, what's good around here. Actually, I don't even care if it's good. It just needs to be edible and in my mouth in the next five minutes. Like Robert D. I mean, I'm I'm faithful to Craig, but this is a uh, this is like time travel. You just do it, and then you just wind right back, right back, and be the faithful papa to my to best man Craig. I know just the place. I follow Robert through their maze of alleys and side streets until we eventually end up in front of a tiny hole in the wall pizza joint. The bright red neon sign says, Pete's Pizza Pizza. <clears throat> Ta-da! I can see a few exhausted looking workers behind the counter tossing dough and pulling piping hot pizzas right out of the stone ovens. My stomach grumbles again. We will go up to the counter and get ready to order. Can I get two slices of Hawaiian pizza? Oh wait, Al, you're cool with pineapples on your pizza, right? Bitch, no! <laughs> Ew, no. Grabber grabs me at the collar. Oh, fuck. I don't even like pineapple on pizza, boy! I'll just pretend. We wait a minute for our pizza to come out of the oven. I'm practically drooling at the smell. The cashier hands us each a giant slice of pizza on a paper plate, so saturated with the grease, that I'm worried it'll fall apart. We take our pizzas outside and wander through the alleyways as we eat. I take a bite. It's absolutely delicious. Pineapple is truly the best pizza topping. You said it. Man, I feel way better now. You and me both. We hear noise coming out of a slightly ajar door in the alleyway. Robert looks at me excitingly. Got any more of that wild in you? You betcha. Good on you. Robert and I slide the door open and peek inside. It's completely dark except for some flickering light. We slowly creep forward, cautious not to be heard or seen. Shh! Don't shush me so loud! Shh! We come to the end of the hallway and find ourselves standing in front of a movie screen. Oh, this suddenly makes sense. Did we really just sneak into a movie theater like a couple of teenagers? No talking during the movie! We lock into the audience to the surprise the scene that's almost completely empty. Save for a row of few teenagers in the front. They look annoyed when they notice us. Robert starts making his way to the very back of the theater and I follow him. We settle in with our wines and try to make sense of this movie. It's a romantic comedy, I think. A young man is frantically trying to get through New York to find the woman and he's finally realized he's in love with. It's already! There's nobody to kiss yet. You want him to kiss the taxi driver? Hell yeah. The kids down the hallway notice us heckling. One of them speaks up. Hey man, keep it down! It's Ernest! It's Ernest! It's my favorite boy! It's a good boy! Oh dear, oh damn, that's Ernest Hemingway, Hugo's kid. Ernest, hey Ernest, I know you, it's me, your neighbor, hi! Ernest turns back around, embarrassed. I turn back to Robert. He kissed anyone yet? It turns out that yes, he did kiss someone. He made his way out of a tiny way to tiny island near New York to profess his lament. Love for a woman who, for some reason, he knew would be there. He tells them that they hit the jackpot. He said that they had, but I think there was some more subtext I'm missing here. Ooh, love is dead. Shut up, it's beautiful. No, you shut up. Ernest grumbles. The credits start to roll. I stand up. Robert immediately pulls me back down. Hundreds of people worked very hard to make this film happen. You're gonna sit here and appreciate them. Uh, okay. Look at that. Elizabeth Shelton. She worked really hard. I bet she did lots of good, uh, wardrobe design. Thank you, Elizabeth Shelton, for this beautiful film-going experience. And Peter Anders. Catering. Fed a bunch of people so that they could have the energy to do their jobs. What a guy. We let the credits roll over. It eventually thanks every member of the crew. Once it's finally over, he makes sure no animals were harmed in the making of this film. We leave the movie theater. We stumble into the theater parking lot, polishing the rest of our wine. Hey, assholes! Out of nowhere, a rock flies through the air and hits me on the knee. My knee! What the hell? Ernest and his friends stand in the alleyway, blocking our exit. Oh, what do you guys want? Why'd you want to throw a rock at my knee? This is my good knee! My orthopedist is gonna be pissed! Ernest tosses another rock up and down his hands. What's wrong with this kid? You ruined my theater-going experience! Now you have to pay! Oh, well, I don't have any cash on me right now. I'm like, movies got really expensive. Ernest hucks another rock at my other knee. I'm able to jump out of the way, but I didn't properly search for physical activity. And I'm probably going to feel super sore in the morning. 
He ruined it for you? That movie was pretty crappy in the first place. Hey, you take that back! That was a beautiful love story with really genuine acting! You call that good acting? What classicist mainstream slop have you been served your entire life? What? Have you ever seen any Michael Powell? A Matter of Life and Death? 1946? Easily the toughest five minutes of love you'll ever witness. Listen, man! No, you listen. That popcorn-ass drivel the mass media is shoving down your throat will only make you dumber and sadder. You of all people should strive for a higher standard in the art you consume. Your name is Ernest Hemingway, for Christ's sake. Oh, now you've done it! Ernest ru rushes Robert, screaming like a banshee. Ah! <laughs> I dive between Ernest and Robert, trying to stop the kid. He lunges toward me, kicking as hard as he can in the knee. Fuck my knee! Robert gets in between Ernest and myself. It's as if he's seeing red. Fuck, my fucking knee hurts. Alright, buddy, talk like a punk, get hit like a punk. Robert squares up into a boxer's dead. <gasps> He's got a punk! <laughs> Queensbury rules. Three minute rounds with one minute rest in between. Low roll bows, fish hooks, j grabs, or high blows. What? And don't even think about pulling an illegal turnstile. That's an automatic deduction of three points. I. I You'll have to doesn't get a second if you're unable to fulfill your role as main duelist. One of your friends over here looks like he's enough youthful vivis vivacity to handle it. Hey man, I don't want to get dragged into this. That movie sucked. It's too late. You two are bloodbound. If he dies, you die. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Talk to Queensbury. We're just gonna go. Ernest's friends wearily back away. Robert calls after him. The Queensbury Association will hear about this. And consume better content. Once the teens are safely out of earshot, Robert turns to me. Were you about to actually fight that kid? Are you kidding me? I would never hit a child. That would be despicable. You throw the rules at him, though. They always bolt. Nobody wants a Queenbury sanctioned throwdown. But full disclosure, I made half of that up. Wow. See, you don't even have to know the rules. You just make them up. Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> Fighting a child in the fucking barking lot. This is a great fucking time. Oh shit, I almost forgot, like, I forgot to, like, link any of this. <laughs> Fuck. Robert and I cool down a bit as we walk back to the neighborhood. I'm so sorry, I really get into the art of filmmaking when I drink. It's okay, I think it's cool how much you like movies. To be honest, I don't know a lot about them myself. Buddy, I got so much to show you. You ever seen any Sam Fuller? I haven't. Fuller's cash. Dinner was four dollars and the movie was free, but you got it. Thanks for dinner and a movie. Robert throws around around my shoulder. We drunkenly bailed out tunes all the way back. We finally get to his doorstep. This was an interesting night. I liked it. A smile forms on his cheeks. A rare sight. Let's hang again soon, yeah? Yeah. Linger there for a second, swaying drunkenly in the night breeze. Robert claps me on the shoulder. Nay, bud. Robert heads back inside and I go home. Wait a minute. There's no sex. Did I fuck up? Hold on. Uh, uh, somehow I S-classed. I, I S-classed that date. I meant to fuck him. Let me fuck the living shit out of him. Fuck. Thanks for the adventure. Bitch is all I got, buddy. Robert throws an arm around my shoulder and we drunkenly bailed out tunes. This was interesting. I liked it. What? Where is my... What the fuck? Did I fuck up? I swear I fucked up. Fuck! Fuck! I swear I thought you fucked on the first date! Okay, Robert, this is gonna get loud, I apologize. Fuck on first date. Hold on, I think I actually, I hope, alright, this, this is a... Okay, I, I think I might have been using the run mic this entire time. Yeah, I've been using the wrong fucking mic.
In fact, I don't even have my mic plugged in. This is all bullshit. What the fuck? I'm, um, really embarrassed. I've been using my uh, default mic this entire time. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh. Hold on, we're gonna look this up. I don't care about dating him. This was meant to be a... I can date him too, whatever. Fuck. Oh, apparently... Oh, apparently, there's some weird stuff if you look it up. Robert, Dream Daddy, first date. Um... Fuck, uh... Oh, apparently they're not gonna give me any, uh... Or oh, whatever, we're gonna date. We're gonna date him. Alright. We're gonna be a little better. We're gonna be better people. We're gonna date him. We're gonna message him. I had a lot of fun with Robert the last time we hung out, but I'm getting to wonder if he's dodging me. I tried messaging him a few times on Dad Book, and he says he hasn't even read him. Haven't even seen him come out of his house, actually. I decided to send him one last message, figuring that this will produce the same result. Hey man, don't know where you've been, but we should grab a drink soon. I walk away from my computer at this, this point. I know he's not messaging me back anytime soon. I linger in the kitchen. I'm all caught up on work. The house is relatively clean. Maybe I should do something nice for Amanda. Ah, I'll bake her favorite pie. I root through the pantry and pull out all the ingredients. This is an old family recipe that I used to make with my grandma when I was a kid. I lost the actual recipe card a long time ago, but I think I'll be able to remember how to bake it. I start mixing the ingredients together for the crust until I get a nice dough. I throw some cherries into a saucepan until I make the filling. Normally, I don't like to multitask in the kitchen, but this cherry pie is a piece of cake. Pie? It's a piece of pie. I'm making a pie. Aw, oh, man, I can never remember what temperature you're supposed to set the oven at. Pretty sure it's 375, but I could be wrong. Who am I kidding? I'm never wrong when it comes to this pie. My special twist on my grandma's recipe includes a secret ingredient that not even Amanda knows about. It really makes the cherries extra flavorful. God, why can't I remember what the secret ingredient is? Almond. Oh, it's almond extract. Duh. Oops, I accidentally poured a little too much in. Way too much in. I'm sure it's fine. Baking is an art, and some of the most beautiful art is made from mistakes. Finally get the pie in the oven. How long am I supposed to leave it in there? 50 minutes? Ah, I'll just wing it. A man is going to be so excited that kid loves a good pie. I have a seat at the kitchen table and do word jumbles until Amanda comes home. I can hear the door slam open. Yo, Pops! What smells like pie in here? It's pie, sweetie. Amanda darts over to the oven and looks inside. Yes! Hey, it's not done. Be patient. What's your angle here? What? Pies are objective-based con confection. What are you trying to get out of me? Oh, boy. Fine, you come. I was hoping to butter you up so you would take me shopping later. Maybe buy me a new tool set. Classic roll reversal. I respect that. I wait a few more minutes before taking the pie out of the oven. I set it on a rack to cool and guard it so Amanda doesn't dig into it before it's ready. Huh. What? Does it look kind of, like, weird to you? Oh, that's just 
me taking your artistic license and what cherry pie means to me emotionally. I'm just saying this because, you know, it seems like you might have baked this pie incorrectly. And you're currently, right now, trying to pass it off as a good thing. It's art, sweetie. Was it art when you accidentally baked a whole uncracked egg into the center of my 12th birthday cake? Well, it's... Was it art when you tried to make brownies and accidentally created, created chlorine gla gas? Oh my god! <gasps> Holy shit! Hold on, I wanna try something. I wanna, uh, see this is a... I'm so sorry about the fucking webcam. This is a little embarrassing. I need to, uh, be professional with this. I will have to, uh, like I got myself a new microphone. Check this shit out, Blue Yeti. Legit. Hell yeah. Wanna try this out and see if it actually works better than my standard mic. Yo, we're gonna do some ASM. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, okay. It works. So, uh, I can uh, do this in a smart thing. <laughs> See, there we go. I like to fuck with my ear chunks. What the fuck, Ghost? You can't do that! The fuck? Mm -mm, mm, the fuck? Mm, you can't do that. Well, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Was it art when you- Just eat the pie, Panda. I cut a few slices and we sit down to eat. The cherry filling oozes out the sides and the buttery crust glistens. I watch as Amanda takes a bite. Ah, uh, what's wrong? Is it not good? Amanda winces and fans her mouth. No, no, I just burned the heck out of the roof with my mouth. This pie is amazing. Sorry for doubting you. I breathe a sigh of relief and take a bite. She's right, the pie is pretty incredible, as it always is. I'm really proud of you for making a pie without burning the new house down. I got a few jad tricks up my dad's sleeve. Maybe fathers aren't as bumbling and stupid as the media makes us out to be. Maybe we, as a society, should have a little more respect for fathers as a whole. Dad, your sleeve is on fire! I run to the sink and put myself out. Pride will be my undoing. A man and I clean up the kitchen and play in a little more living room. Ha, poops, before she retreats to her room to do homework. I bo go back to my room and jumbles. Hey, this one smells cat. The rest of the evening is trickles by. We eat dinner. I help Amanda with one of her scholarship applications. And we both start getting ready for bed. New mic who dis? It's thirsty teenager. Still nothing from Robert. Huh. Hope he's okay. I turn out the lights and lie down. Hey. Allie. Hey. Hey, Allie. Hey, I'm outside. Come outside. Ugh, what was that? What was that? I was trying to fall asleep. I climb out of bed and try to identify the source of the digging. My computer screen illuminates the dark room. <laughs> He's like, hey, 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 I'm outside. Oh my god, this is great. Don't make me honk. I will honk. Get out here. Look out my window. Sure enough, there's Robert leaning up against his pickup truck in the driveway. <laughs> I open my door and try to figure out what's going on. Hey. Hey? Wanna hang? I was kind of sleeping. That's no fun. Come hang out. I would argue that sleeping is very fun, but I don't have to be anywhere in the morning. Might as well live a little. Sure. Cool. You plan on going out like that? I look down and realize that I am, in fact, not wearing pants. I mean, I don't mind. Right. One second. I run inside and throw on my going out pants, shoes, and jacket. I grab my keys and meet Robert back outside. Ready? Ready. Hop in. I run into the passenger seat of his old red pickup truck. I have to move a few empty cigarette passes, packets and gas station receipts out of the way before I can sit. Robert silently starts the car and we drive off to the cul-de-sac. You like Tom Waits? Hoist that rag, baby. I look before I can answer. Robert turns up the radio. Yep, that's Tom Waits, all right. 
He lights a cigarette and cracks the windows. We drive together in silence. So, where are we going? Robert doesn't respond. Robert? Oh, I heard you. He still doesn't answer my question. I look out the window and notice that Robert's taking us to the highway. I twiddle my thumbs. Well, whatever I've gotten myself into, looks like I'm in it for the night. I sit in my seat and watch streetlights pass by. I glance over to Robert, who's driving intently. He looks tired, as he always does. But there's something a bit more there that I just can't place. Hmm, what is it? Uh, hmm. I'm not going to say anything because he doesn't like to say things. I remember Robert said hating about small talk because I had to keep my mouth shut. He notices me staring. Stop looking so nervous. I'm not nervous. I'm a little nervous. Just hang on. We're almost there. Almost where? I have no idea where we are. I think we're moving at a slight incline, but I'm not so sure. We eventually come to a stop. Robert gets out of the car and I sit for a second. Unsure if he wants me to get out too. What are you waiting for? I hastily exit the car. Robert sits on the bed of his truck and pats the space next to him. I sit down and take in the view. We're on a hill overlooking the city skyline against the bay. The cool night air rustles some trees near us as lights blink in the distance. Off the side, I can see an entrance to a dense forest. Man, it's all so gorgeous. This is where I come to masturbate. I could end the stream right here. You know, this would be a good place. That's a great little cliffhanger for the rest of the uh, Dream Daddy shit, but, you know, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep going. What? I'm kidding. What's wrong with you? This is my little spot where I come to think. It's nice. You can see the whole city from up here. Really gives you some perspective. Robert reaches behind him and pulls out something from under his jacket. It glints in the moonlight, and I suddenly realize what it is. Oh shit, that's a knife! Oh. Please don't stab me! Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a small piece of wood. Please don't stab me with that either! Robert takes the knife into the piece of wood and starts carving at it. Oh. I breathe a very audible sense of sigh of relief as Robert looks at me sideways. Did you think I was gonna stab you just now? What? No. Hate to break it to you, but I did, in fact, bring you out here to harvest your organs. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna play along. Yeah, well, you think you caught me in your trap, but I knew. For years I've been putting out the most vile junk food in my body in preparation for this day. Come at me, friend, and reap what you will. Two steps ahead of you of all times. That's how I operate. Haha, <laughs> nothing gets past you, huh? Robert reaches in his pocket and pulls out a folding knife that he opens and hands it to me. I'm gonna warn you, the last guy I had a knife fight with lost three fingers because he didn't know the eight basic rules of knife fighting. You're familiar, correct? I, I, I honestly can't tell when you're kidding. I'm so many levels of irony deep that I've forgotten what humor is. Oh boy. He and I laugh. Have you ever whittled before? Consider that I'm not a grandpa, no. What do you mean by that? Well, I just thought that you would have a block of wood shipped to you, along with your first social security check. Hey, Ellie, I'll have you know that whittling is a time-honored tradition and to it both young and old alike. That you're dismissing it before you've even tried it speaks volumes about your character. However, because I've gotten to know you for some time and I've come to think of us as friends, I'm willing to attribute it to ignorance instead of malice. What I'm trying to say is, go get that stick. Robert motions to a good-looking stick on the ground. Perfect for potential whittling. I pick it up. The most important thing to remember while whittling is to cut with the grain, not against it. If you cut against the grain, the wood is going to splinter. Isn't the most important thing safety? No. Getting hurt comes with the territory. Look at my damn hands. Look at his damn hands. They're cows and covered in little white scars. They are very nice hands. You can't make a stick on it without breaking a few hand eggs. Oh, uh, what? What? Uh, what is happening? That's a good start, isn't it? Uh... 
what the fuck do I do? Uh, pencil. Good luck writing with that. You made a highly dangerous weapon. What the fuck? Tell me about this one. Flatworm. Gross. You made a flatworm. What is this? This is the best thing ever. What's the story here? Something to make me look tougher. It's working. I think you could take me in a fight. Probably. You made a tough guy accessory. What the fuck is going on? Hmm, what's this? Chicken nugget. Please don't eat that. You made Robert uncomfortable. Yay! This just keeps going. Hmm, nice form. What's it supposed to be? It's you. You really captured my likeness. I'm impressed. You made Robert, I guess. Look at the CGI is beautiful. What is this? Interesting. What do we have here? Ambidextrous top stick. It's a stick. You made a chopstick. How many more of these are we gonna do? <laughs> if you keep this up. Fuck, I, did, I missed it. Um, new friend. She's beautiful. I'm happy for you. You made a new friend. <laughs> beautiful handiwork. What do you call it? Sir Horsington the Brave. A brave and noble name for a brave and noble creature. You made a beautiful gift for Amanda. Aww, that was sweet. Robert and I sit in silence for a while, carving our pieces of wood. I think I'm getting the hang of this. It's actually kind of relaxing. I'm, I glance over to see what Robert's working on, and he's carving a smaller wooden knife. Ah! While well, I'm distracted, the knife slices into my thumb. Blood gushes all over my little wooden carving. Um, Robert's lost in carving. Doesn't notice me bleeding everywhere. Uh, Robert still doesn't notice. Robert, I'm dying. I'm bleeding to death. Robert finally looks over. He reaches into his jacket again. Jesus, how much stuff does this guy keep in there? Pulls out a red bandana. He wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. He hops off the truck and I can hear him rummaging around in his car. He comes back a moment later with a well-stocked first aid kit. Robert carefully wipes all the blood off my hands and swipes a bit of antiseptic on the cut. With surprising gentleness, he places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it up. Aw. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. He hands me what's left of the tube of antiseptic. Make sure to keep that cut clean. It's oddly touching and a little sexy? Hmm. Guess I'm a real whittler now. That you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of blood. Wait, what? What's attracted to the smell of blood? Cryptids. Tons of them out here, you know. This boy believes in cryptids. Real, actual fucking cryptids. Cryptids? Like Mothman and stuff? Mothman is bullshit, but yeah, this town's a hotbed for cryptozoological occurrences. Mothman is bullshit because, um, Mothman sucked Robert's dick and an Arby's and left him on red. You're joking. Oh, how I wish I were. I'm a skeptic myself. Or at least I thought I was. There are things in these woods that we can't possibly comprehend. I think about my entire time in the city. Tied to the occasional stray coyote, I don't think it's too bad. You ever hear of the Dover Ghost? I don't think so. Well, let me tell you a story. Uh, I was out in the woods here on a weekend camping trip with Betsy. You don't know Betsy, but she's a big pup. Pitbull. Real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes without incident. I get some solitude. Betsy gets to pee whenever she wants. All good stuff. Second day, I get the idea from my head that I can hike deeper, deeper into the woods. Well, probably gets my better judgment, but hey, we're just having a fun camping trip, right? So me and Betsy start ma marching in the morning. It gets a little late, and we set up a camp, but it's different this night. 
real quiet. I can hear the birds, the crickets, the squirrels, nothing. Dead silent. Oh, it's like popcorn. Oh, I wish I made popcorn. Then it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life, right outside of my tent. Me and Betsy, we go to investigate. We look around the clearing. Nobody's there. But there's this feeling. Not sure if I can describe it. I know someone, something, is watching us. Betsy, though, she's scared. Never seen her like that. And when she's scared, I know that I should be too. Then I see it. In the distance. A man. But it's something that didn't know what a man was supposed to... But if something that didn't know what a man was supposed to look like made it, it just looked wrong. Big arms. Arms too big, long for its body. Black eyes. It just stood there and stared at me. Then it disappears. I hear one yelp from Betsy and I turn around to check on her. But she's gone. Into thin air. I didn't sleep at all in my tent that night. And I don't think I've ever slept right since. You're lying. Okay, you're full of shit. You think I'm lying? Robert pulls out his wallet and shows me a picture of a beautiful pit bull. Tell that to Betsy. They say if you listen closely on quiet nights, you know, it's just like tonight, you can hear the howl of the Dover ghost. A howl resonates in the woods. It doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away, something about it makes my skin crawl. Okay, Robert, real funny. I turn to look at Robert. He's white as a sheet. You're messing with me, right? I was messing with you up until literally just now. I totally made that camping story up. I strain my eyes to scan the forest line, trying to see how, where that how it originated from. Off in the distance, I see something. It's so far away, barely make out a shape. It looks human, but it's dragging something. Um, do you see that? We should go. Robert and I slowly back away and get to the trunk. He turns his headlights on and we make a slow call away. Back out of the road. I'm too scared to look back. What was that? A Dover ghost, I guess. I chuckle nervously. This time it doesn't seem like he's messing with me. Or maybe someone illegally dumping garbage on the wildlife preserve? Yeah, that's the story we tell ourselves. We sit in silence for a little while longer. The fear of whatever was slowly subsiding as we get closer to the city. Thanks for coming out. This was fun. I'm sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just been in a way lately. Had to get out of the house. Had to be around somebody. You doing okay, man? Robert thinks for a second and lights another cigarette. Been doing a lot of thinking. He takes a long drag. As I get older, I feel more that I'm just drowning in this sea of regret. I was so busy chasing after these things I thought would make me happy. I didn't even think about anybody else. All I cared for was about was myself. I didn't even think. Robert just stops. I wait for him to finish his thoughts, but he just stares at the road. Maybe I'm just built like this. Maybe I just do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice that I'm unhappy as I am. Try to think of something to say. Remember all the times in my life where I've been sad? There's a great many of them, but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Something I held on to that kept me going. But there's something so signed about the way Robert's talking. Hmm. I'm glad you told me. Must have taken a lot for you to want to tell somebody this. You're a mysterious guy, Robert. You don't have to be. Do you ever wish you were a better father? I think about it for a second. All the time. You can read all the parenting books I want, but nothing will ever prepare you for raising a child. There's so much stuff I regret or wish you could have done better, but I don't have the answers. I don't know if anybody does. It's funny. Look at you in your relationship with your daughter, and it seems perfect. It isn't. At least you're there for her. Stare out the window at the blur of passing trees. I just hope I'm a better father to my kids than my dad was to me. What did your dad do? It's more about what he didn't do. He's quiet. Stoic. Don't think he ever once told me that he loved me. He cared more about his work than he ever did about me or my mom. That's out of character because my dad is fucking great. I love him. Loving the bits. Hell yeah. Dad, I love my father. My dad is beautiful and wonderful. Do you ever, do you hate him? No, I used to, but after I became a parent, I just kind of felt bad for him. He missed out on my whole childhood. When I think about all the happiest moments of my life, they were all with Amanda and Alex, and he just wasn't there. It hurt like hell when I had to leave him to die in that Belarusian, Belarusian prison. What? 
I turn around and smile at him. No, he's retired in Florida with my mom. We go there every Christmas. We both break out into laughter. He pats me on the shoulder. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow brighter. Robert drops me off at my place. As I'm about to close the passenger door, I realize I still have Robert's pocket knife in my jacket. I pull it out and offer it back to him. You hold on to that. Never know when you might need it. Night, Robert. Have a safe drive home. Robert smirks, then pulls away. He then immediately pulls into his driveway, which is one over there from mine. He gets out and waves. I tip and toe into the house, careful not to wake Amanda up. Whoa, where'd you come from? Look around spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. I thought you were sleeping. Oh, uh, Robert woke me up to go cryptid hunting. You know the Mothman's bullshit, right? Amanda, Lang, you know what? It's fine. I think about the conversation I had with Robert in the car as Amanda stops, starts walking towards the room. Hey, Amanda? She stops. I love you. It's weird when you say it outright and sincerely like that, but I love you too. Night! I chuckle to myself and finally decide to go to bed. Date complete. class I am a master of wooing fathers uh, we're gonna save here and I think we'll probably close the stream for the night this was really funny this was really dumb this is real this is like really like I am stoked that this game knows who I am uh, thank y'all for watching, thank y'all for coming around, like, subscribe, all that shit, and, uh, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad we, uh, I'm glad I played this, this is a good game. Real fun. Fun for the whole family. Bye, guys!